Devadatta was by tradition a Buddhist monk, cousin and brother-in-law of Gautama Siddhartha, the Sakamuni Buddha, and brother of Ananda, a principal student of the Buddha. Devadatta was a Kolian and Sakyan and is said to have parted from the Buddhas following with 500 other monks to form their own Sangha, most of whom are said to have been Shakya clan relatives of both Devadatta and Siddhartha. Etymology <inaudible> 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 The name Devadatta has the meaning God given in Pali cf. Latin Deodatus, Dusdedit, both also meaning God given. It is composed from the stem form of Deva and the past participle data of the verb da, give, composed as a tipurusa compound. In the Bhagavad Gita, the conch shell used by Arjuna on the battlefield of Kurukshetra was named Devadatta. The name Devadatta is still used today. Topic: Scholarship. Topic: Mahasamgika Vinaya research. According to Andrew Skilton, modern scholarship generally agrees that the Mahasamgika Vinaya is the oldest extant Buddhist Vinaya. According to Reginald Ray, the Mahasamgika Vinaya mentions the figure of Devadatta, but in a way that is different from the Vinayas of the Staviravada branch. According to this study, the earliest Vinaya material common to all sects simply depicts Devadatta as a Buddhist saint who wishes for the monks to live a rigorous lifestyle. This has led Ray to regard the story of Devadatta as a legend produced by the Stavira group. Records from Chinese pilgrims to India Faxian and other Chinese pilgrims who travelled to India in the early centuries of the current era recorded the continued existence of Gautamaka, Buddhists, followers of Devadatta. Gautamaka are also referred to in Pali texts of the 2nd and 5th centuries of the current era. The followers of Devadatta are recorded to have honoured all the Buddhas previous to Sakamuni, Gautama Buddha, but not Sakamuni himself. According to Faxian, Xuanzang and Yijing's writings, some people practiced in a similar way and with the same books as common Buddhists, but followed the similar tapas and performed rituals to the past three Buddhas and not Sakamuni. <laughs> Theravada portrayals of Devadatta Devadatta in the Theravada Vinaya In Kulavaga section 7 of the Vinayapitaka of the Theravadins which deals with schisms, it is told how Devadatta went forth along with a number of the Buddha's other relatives and clansmen. In the first year he attained psychic power, but made no supermundane achievement. Looking round to see whom he could convince to honour him he decided to approach Prince Ajatasattu, the heir to the Magadhan throne. Having psychic power he assumed the form of a young boy clad in snakes and sat in the prince's lap, which very much impressed the prince, who became his disciple. Ajatasattu began to send great offerings to Devadatta, and the latter became obsessed with his own worth, and began to have thoughts that it was he who should lead the Sangha, not the Buddha, and he didn't desist even though this thought brought down his psychic powers. When told about the offerings that Devadatta was receiving, the Buddha remarked that all these gains were only going towards his destruction, just as a plantain or a bamboo is destroyed by its fruit. Shortly thereafter, Devadatta asked the Buddha to retire and let him take over the running of the Sangha. The Buddha retorted that he did not even let his trusted disciples Sariputta or Magallana run the Sangha, much less one like him, who should be vomited like spittle, and he gave a special act of publicity about him, warning the monks that he had changed for the worse. Seeing the danger in this, Devadatta approached Prince Ajatasattu and encouraged him to kill his father, the good king Bimbisara, and meanwhile he would kill the Buddha. The king found out about his plan and gave over the kingdom into the prince's control. Ajatasattu then gave mercenaries to Devadatta who ordered them to kill the Buddha, and in an elaborate plan to cover his tracks he ordered other men to kill the killers, and more to kill them and so on, but when they approached the Buddha they were unable to carry out their orders, and were converted instead. Devadatta then tried to kill the Buddha himself by throwing a rock at him from on high, while the Buddha was walking on the slopes of a mountain. As this also failed he decided to have the elephant Nalagiri intoxicated and let him loose on the Buddha while he was on alms round. 
However, the power of the Buddha's loving kindness overcame the elephant. Devadatta then decided to create a schism in the order, and collected a few monk friends and demanded that the Buddha accede to the following rules for the monks, they should dwell all their lives in the forest, live entirely on alms obtained by begging, wear only robes made of discarded rags, dwell at the foot of a tree and abstain completely from fish and flesh. The Buddha refused to make any of these compulsory, however, and Devadatta went round blaming him, saying that he was living in abundance and luxury. Devadatta then decided to create a schism and recite the training rules Padamaka apart from the Buddha and his followers, with 500 newly ordained monks. The Buddha sent his two chief disciples Sariputta and Magallana to bring back the erring young monks. Devadatta thought they had come to join his Sangha and, asking Sariputta to give a talk, fell asleep. Then the chief disciples persuaded the young monks to return to the Buddha. The Buddha did not show any hatred or deceive, even after what Devadatta had done. Soon after, Devadatta got sick and realized that what he had done was wrong. He tried to go to Buddha's place to apologize for what he did, but it was too late. On the way to the Buddha, the earth sucked him into the Naraya hell for his deeds. Theravada account According to the Pali Canon, he taught his Sangha to adopt five tapas literally, austerities throughout their lives that monks should dwell all their lives in the forest that they should accept no invitations to meals, but live entirely on alms obtained by begging that they should wear only robes made of discarded rags and accept no robes from the laity that they should dwell at the foot of a tree and not under a roof that they should abstain completely from fish and flesh. The Buddha's reply was that those who felt so inclined could follow these rules, except that of sleeping under a tree during the rainy season, but he refused to make the rules obligatory. They are among the thirteen ascetic practices. His followers including bhikkhus and bhikkhunis were new monks from the Vajji clan. <laughs> Mahayana portrayals of Devadatta Topic. Lotus Sutra According to Jacqueline Stone and Stephen F. Tyser, Devadatta was "...well known to the sutra's early devotees as the Buddhist archetype of an evildoer." In the context of the "...promise of Buddhahood for everyone, this chapter became widely understood as illustrating the potential for enlightenment even in evil persons." In the Lotus Sutra, Chapter 12, found in the Mahayana Buddhist tradition, the Buddha teaches that in a past life, Devadatta was his holy teacher who set him on the path, and makes a noteworthy statement about how even Devadatta will in time become a Buddha. The Buddha said to his monks, The king at that time was I myself, and this seer was the man who is now Devadatta. All because Devadatta was a good friend to me, I was able to become fully endowed with this six paramitas, pity, compassion, joy, and indifference, with the thirty-two features, the eighty characteristics, the purple-tinged golden color, the ten powers, the four kinds of fearlessness, the four methods of winning people, the eighteen unshared properties, and the transcendental powers and the power of the way. The fact that I have attained impartial and correct enlightenment and can save living beings on a broad scale is all due to Devadatta who was a good friend." In the Mahamegasutra Devadatta is called a Mahapurusa great being. <laughs> Amitayarjana Sutra In the Mahayana Buddhist text, the Amitayarjana Sutra, Devadatta is said to have convinced Prince Ajatasattu to murder his father King Bimbisara and ascend the throne. Ajatasattu follows the advice, and this action another Anantarika Kama for killing one's own father prevents him from attaining stream entry at a later time, when listening to some teaching of the Buddha. This is confirmed by the Samanya Phalasutta of the Diga Nikaya DN2. <laughs> <laughs> 